Welcome to The Corner, the source's digital show dedicated to the sport and entertainment industry. Every two weeks, we invite a professional to share their experience, background, and challenges. The sport industry moves fast, and having their insights is the best way to keep up to speed. Welcome to The Corner. We have to say that women have been, women and girls have been playing football a long time. Mm. It's not that massive as in the men's side because we all know why, no? That we didn't have the space and the proper um, um, competitions where we could held it. And obviously the cultural part, no? Um, So, um, we understood that uh, representation matters, viewership matters. matters. Um, this showcase that you're talking about, um, it was mm-hmm. important because in parallel, we had a very strong national team um, development you know, pathway. They've been, and curiously, and I would say it's not a funny thing to say, but... It's curious that since we launched the league, we've not qualified to a World Cup. We didn't qualify to, to um, France and we didn't qualify to Australia. Mm. So, Too um, many competitions. Exactly. We launched the competition and uh, we started finding a lot of issues we had of how we had built that pathway because we didn't have a competition, right? Um, so we had very good players here that didn't fit in the amateur level now, no? So we had to do a mm. competition for those players. That- a professional, exactly. okay. In terms of pathway, it was more like the elite transition and more the professional side of exactly. things. Now, okay, I understand. We did lack of that pathway for the whole pool of players, right? Mm. That became our biggest challenge. Um, and we can see it till, day, uh, till now that... Um, uh, we don't have players that have been involved in the elite um, system from a young age, right? The girls' academies, it's, it's, it's been, we've launched our youth competition, but that was our biggest challenge. Who were going to be the players? We had the stakeholders, we had the broadcasters, we had the political willing, as you were saying, but how we were going to select those players, who were the ones that Play, mm-hmm. who draft for their clubs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I believe. Do you have Do you have an answer on that? Is it because they were moving to? Uh, I was thinking, like you said, it's the biggest in Latam. Uh, is it because North America and especially the US, which is a very strong, I would say, female uh, football country? Uh, and with like top clubs and and all of that, is it because the the top players from Mexico were moving to to the U.S. or to Canada, or uh, was it something? Do you have an answer to that, or have you found something around this professional uh, pathway where there was this gap? Well, the gap obviously was um, USA. I could even say Costa Rica. Canada in the national team, but um, USA had a leverage of 30 years of development. Mm-hmm. They also have Title IX. Okay. They have a lot of public policies that help develop the women's um, sports, right? Uh, but on the other hand, the leverage for us was the whole region was lacking of women's football, or professional leagues, professional or elite competitions, pathways, etc. So right now we're home for 40 foreign players that are born and raised on those regions. Like um, I would say uh, we have a lot of Costa Rican players, no Um, Colombians, uh, a lot of Latin American people um, with us. Um, But on the other hand, I think it's important that a competitive advantage we have is that the top ranked countries like the world cup, champions and the Olympics champions are our neighbors, right? So that gives huge <laughs> leverage to um, learn learn to compete. Um, to 
to study best practices, a lot of study cases we had, no? But there's something very important that differentiates us from every single league we've met, we've known. And it's how our governing okay. body uh, was built and how our competition, we structure our business model. And that's because um, we would say that our governing body is the professional league. So the professional mm -hmm. league I make is, is the regulatory body for the three professional leagues, men's, women's, and I would say it's like a second division um, competition, right? And cool. it was mandatory for the 18 affiliated clubs for the men's side to um, launch the women's side. So they invest in both divisions, in both competitions. And that for us till now has been the biggest competitive advantage we, because we have the willing, we have the knowledge, we, we know what formula works and what doesn't. And also... Um, We have a lot of weaknesses that we we need to work on, like our core business was developing males competition. And mm. like the same thing, but it's not. So um, we had to build um, new um, rules. We have to change and transform our regulations for like, small details that are actually very important for women's life. Yeah. You know, we didn't have any But did did the clubs did, did the clubs decide? So I guess like in every professional leagues, all the clubs they sit in the board. Yeah. And back in 2016, 17, they were like, okay, we need to have like a female competition. So they decided by themselves we need to make it unique, different. And so all the clubs will have their own female division or female academy, and they would have to play in the first league on the on the the women's side. So they all decided that, right? But what drove the, uh, I'm going back to that because that was the second question I had is, I understand why, I mean, I understand why they would do it. Is it, were there like external factors where, I don't know, in the decades, in the past decades, you were like, okay, that's an important business case or that's something that we need to develop because we see the likes of... Uh, FC Barcelona or the yeah. uh, Olympique Lyonnais or Wolfsburg in Europe, where they were like, okay, these kind of elite top clubs, they manage also to have elite top female section, which drives also maybe, you were mentioning the specificity of the business case. So I'm trying to see why by themselves, 18 clubs and, and I think 18 male dominated, uh, <laughs> an executive board would say, okay, we, we go there. Is it? Because they have seen what was working outside or uh, what was the behind it? Amazing question. I think it's a bunch of things. The first thing I would say is okay. being neighbors with USA is a huge, huge advantage. And let me tell you why. Because we know, we've seen the future. For us, watching how mm -hmm. sports develop in USA has taught us a huge lesson about sports business, right? So we have very smart owners with a lot of vision that they understand where they want to take their clubs. Mm. And that vision helped us with the lobbying to, to push forward this business model because, um, as you know, for example, with the men's side, they launched a new competition called the Leagues Cup. And the Leagues Cup is basically yeah. a, a joint venture with the MLS. And it's because 60 million Mexicans, Hispanic people, are living in the USA that love our league. And that happens the same to Mexico. And it has to do with feelings. It's this fan base we have in the region that... Um, basically goes back to the back back to basics we love sports we love football we love our teams right and it doesn't matter Ooh, if we're talking about yeah. you teams it doesn't matter if we're it doesn't it doesn't have to do with gender anything it has to do with love for the game right and love for your team so on one hand 
um, this was one of the purpose driven. And the other thing I would say very important was the cultural change we've been having in our country. And um, there's been a lot of advocacy, a lot of um, accountability, a lot of um, fighting for equal rights, a bunch of things, gender equality, that uh, when you have a country like Mexico that eats, breathes um, football, what happens is that um, it makes sense, right? You just will. Like repeat the, the the successful formula we have in the men's side. Thanks for listening to our podcast. We hope you enjoy it as much as we love creating them. If you like the episode, feel free to comment, rate, and share with people around you. You can visit our website, www.lastsource.io, to learn more about our activities. You will discover a wide range of articles and can subscribe to our newsletter to receive the latest tech and sports news in your mailbox every month. Stay tuned for new episodes. Le Corner.